In the next, let us consider a new family of linear models. We are interested in the problem of predicting real value target values. So as before, the linear models um, are weighted. Uh, uh, the linear the linear data model computes a weighted sum of all data attributes and use this value for the prediction of the target value. Because the target value itself is a real value a real valued quantity. So in the regression problem, we are interested in setting up the uh, width or the model parameters in the linear model so that the combination, the weighted combination using those weights with the observed attributes of the data is closed to the target value. <coughs> Let's view this practice from the point of view of machine learning framework. Um, this is a review of, um, um, of taking the same perspective for perceptions. In perception, perception is another member of linear model. And linear models, in linear models, the hypotheses take the format of the combination of model parameters, the weights, and the data attributes. Call that value A. And the operation, the relationship between A and the prediction in perception is that uh, the prediction would be <coughs> positive or negative determined by the sign of the value of A. And the criteria of a linear classifier is the number of errors that has been made on the um, training samples. So when it comes to regression, firstly, uh, there is a simplified uh, link between the, the, the A value, the weighted sum of the data attributes, and the target value. So the hypothesis, the hypothesis is that the target value is that um, weighted sum of the data attributes. And secondly, we change the error mirrors to be the squared error on all the data samples. Take it graphically. Um, so this is an intuitive illustration of the linear regression model. Um, consider the x-axis represent one single data attribute in this way, and um, um, the y-axis represent the target value. Here is an example of a linear uh, regressor, one hypothesis of a linear regressor. I did not claim that this is the best one, this is one of them. So it predicts that the relationship between the x and the <coughs> target value y is linear. So this is a line, a straight line. And uh, the cost, the uh, error criteria or the loss function in this, uh, for this hypothesis, uh, given those data sample, are the errors measured at each data sample. To denote it mathematically, I'd like to write uh, the value that's been predicted at uh, the i data sample as hxi. We take the difference between the predicted value and the given value and take a square of those error because you do not want those offsets the positive offsets and the negative offsets at different data samples cancel each other when you try to uh, calculate the error that has been made by one street line. 
a big advantage of、um, linear regression model is that it is very simple to solve. Which means in this diagram, the algorithm、um, is not、um, is is in a broad sense a searching procedure to get the optimal. Uh, model parameters. In practice, in linear regression, those parameters can be solved mathematically. In、uh, analy analytically, you do not need a search uh, procedure process. It's very efficient. So the following discussion is a little bit technical. Don't worry if you cannot follow it. Because all modern machine learning toolbox provide you solvers for linear regression problems, you only need to assign、um, tell tell the the model builder what are the input variables, what are the target values, or where are the data, and、uh, the model parameters parameters can be calculated automatically for you.、Um, So let's have a look at the at the relationship of a linear models prediction and the target value at each individual data point. Consider the previous example. You have only two input variables. The two includes the one that we have taken. Uh, as a dummy one, which is constantly one, therefore、um, we can we can、um, include the constant bias item in the、um, in the format of matrix multiplication. So remember that、um, those x zero of each sample are constantly one. So we have two input variables and we have two. Parameters. If we have only two data points, and we would like to solve for W zero and W one, so that W zero and W one, when they combine the input verb、uh, input attributes for x zero and x one for the first. Data sample, it will predict the exact value of the target value of the first data sample, so and so forth. If we consider only two data samples, I you do not need more reminder to to recall that this is no more than solving linear equations. It's very simple, and of course, if you have only one data sample. You will have infinitely many solutions for W zero and W one that satisfy the condition that their combination makes、uh, the prediction at this singular singular data point exact. <clears throat> But of course, from the、uh, machine learning point of view, this is useless. So let's consider if we have more data samples like the one. In the example here, if you have only two points, you can always make a line that passing the two points exactly. But if you have more points, you need to compromise the errors the line makes at each data points at all data points. We have more <coughs> data points to worry about. <coughs> we will have multiple such equations. Uh, for which it becomes impossible to find a pair of W zero and W one that simultaneously satisfy all the conditions at all the data points, unless、uh, by very good luck you have all the points line themselves up in a straight line, which is、uh, very rare in、um, practical problems. So in this case, our、um, our strategy 
is to consider what kind of conditions must an optimal parameter satisfy. So at the optimal value, the parameters will have what kind of characteristics and if we can formulate the characteristic mathematically, we can use this formulation to find the optimal parameter uh, logically. So that is um, how linear models are solved, linear regression models are solved. We can write this set of equations in matrix multiplication way. <clears throat> uh, well, I apologize because I've changed the numbering of the data samples a little bit. Previously, I start from zero, now I start from one. But that does not change the nature of the problem. Let's say the data matrix um, is organized in this way. You have one row of data represent, uh, one row of the matrix represent one sample of the data. And uh, um, there are n rows, that means we have uh, n samples of data, and each row, each data sample consists of p uh, attributes. So um, the prediction problem is you would use x uh, times the parameter w to approximate the values in the y vector, which has n values. And the optimal solution of W is given by this equation. So how this equation has been arrived? Let's consider a little bit further. First, the difference between the prediction and the y value is given by this equation. This is the prediction. Um, <clears throat> in this prediction, you use each row of x, which is uh, one sample, times the column of w, combines the weights, and then get one value of the prediction at this sample uh, corresponding to y, the corresponding y value. And for each of the row, you get uh, one prediction, and this is a vector of uh, n elements. And this n vector minus the y, which is also an n vector, you get the difference between the prediction and uh, the known target value at each data sample. This squared error is the element y squared and sum operator on this difference vector which can be uh, achieved using vector multiplication. You take the transpose of the column vector into a row vector, and this row vector times the column vector is uh, element-wise production and summation, which is the, the required squared error. And this this step is a, a bit technical. You might want to check uh, exam. Uh, you might want to refer to some linear algebra textbook to get that. If we would like to investigate how much this square error would change when each of the elements of W change a little bit. That is to take the partial differentiate uh, on the derivative of the squared error with respect to W. It would have this quantity. And as we have said, at the optimal position, this partial derivative need to be zero. Why? It's because um, do you can imagine that when the W, the weight change freely, the squared error value will have the minimum value because it is 
lower bounded um, uh, I think I get the curve upside down it should have a minimum value not a maximum value apology for this let me let me change it a little bit oh it uh, it uh, it was a mistake um, the the relation should be like that you can you can imagine that if you give the freedom you want to subtach the, the 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 model you can you can make the error infinitely large by freely uh, uh, varying by freely changing the value of w to be very very large values so that the prediction value deviates changes from the correct prediction to a very very far point and then that squared error would be very big on the other hand the square error has a minimal value that minimal value is given at the optimal w so you are sure that at the optimal point the w well at the optimal point you achieve the minimum value of the square error the rate of changing of the target value with respect to w at the optimal or the minimal or any extreme of w must be flat as this is a squared error if it is not which means if you change w the the error changes with w it will mean that if you change w on uh, the opposite direction you would uh, change the value uh, of the of the square error uh, to a s you will get a smaller square error uh, value that is, which is uh, which is uh, which dictate uh, contradicts the assumption that your w is has already been the w that gives you the extreme of square error so the logic is as extreme the curve must be flat and the partial derivative must be zero therefore you get the solution in this format